All right. I guess we're live. It seems like we're live. We had to do some modifications. Facebook Live was not working. And uh, so we are now live on Be Live. Got Tara Wilson there, Citara from the greater Danville, California area. And uh, so thanks for coming on, Tara. Hey, my pleasure. Always a pleasure, Tim. <laughs> so Tara's uh, been a very successful network marketer, multiple seven-figure income earner for several years now. And uh, I guess it's kind of funny. We should probably start out with the fact that you're now a Hall of Famer. <laughs> but uh, our good friend Ted Newton over at Business for Home has has made you a Hall of Famer recently. And so maybe you can give a shout out to Ted for that honor. Absolutely. No, that was a, a nice surprise to wake up to Monday morning to uh, find out that I was inducted. I'm <laughs> not sure what I did to deserve it. Just been plugging along for 11 years and um, had some good successes. Love the industry. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a, a staying award, but Pretty cool nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how official that Hall of Fame is, if you're going to be like uh, in giving out any speeches or getting a special jacket or anything like that at the at the ceremony. But uh, it was cool that you get recognized, obviously, for doing what you're doing for the for as long as you have. Um, so it's fun to see Ted uh, recognize the people that are having success. So it was good stuff. I like your hat. Nice hat there, buddy. Yeah, it's the High Achievers hat. See that logo there? Why don't I have a high achievers hat? I don't know. You get the playbooks for for a nominal fee. So, oh, you got the hat. I, I love it. The new annual. I do. I like it. I like that it has a whiteboard. <laughs> like the whiteboard. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, we yeah. also updated the uh, master prospect list in there as well, which was your recommendation because you wanted more room to write the notes when you talk to people. So that was that's now been changed follow updates added, stuff like that, as you know. Yep, very good, good stuff here. Yeah, so um, I wanted to ask you uh, kind of just some questions. This is obviously off the cuff, unplugged, so to speak, nothing really planned, but um, there's lots of people that jump in and are new to network marketing and, and uh, they don't know how necessarily to launch themselves the right way. And there's a lot of people that jump into the profession and they don't have a leader you know, to your caliber, so to speak. They jump in with someone that's also brand new. They jump in with someone that's, you know, that their sponsor is also, you know, new and new and new. And you're, and then all of a sudden you're, you're like, well, what do I do? Not everyone gets the, you know, gets to work with someone of your caliber when they get started. But what would you give advice to the newest person who's launching their business on how to have success? out of the gate or what are some of the things that you recommend your new people do when you get them launched? Uh, well, first of all, um, I would say out of the gates before doing anything, it's kind of more like just setting the right mindset, the right expectations. I think that's the most important thing is to understand what this industry is and what it is not. It is not a get rich get quick scheme. It is not a sign up and somebody's going to build your download for you. It is not a uh, overnight success. I mean, um, yes, you can have quick success. You can compress time and, and do the activities faster. I mean, in my first company, uh, working full time with two small kids, I was still able to retire myself in about eight months and replace a six figure income. But let's make it clear that I was, I was doing a lot more than most people do part time. I was almost doing full time on top of full time. Um, so the right expectations, like knowing that this is building a business. And yes, you can, I think the thing is that people invest such a small amount of money that they think it's a small amount of work, right? Whereas if you go and invest $500,000 in opening a, a traditional business or even $100,000, you're going to work your tail off, you know, to even just try to pay back that loan, let alone make it a success where you can get in for a couple hundred bucks, thousand dollars into network marketing. And if you just treat it like a thousand dollar business, it's going to pay you that. But I am um, always from the gates had my kind of my sights set on a, a bigger goal than that. And, um, you know, learned quickly how to turn that. I think my original investment in network marketing was probably $500, you know, 11 years ago, turn that into, uh, you know, again, millions, millions of dollars because of mindset. Number two is learn the basics. Um, don't be an analysis paralysis. Don't think you have to learn it all before you go. The great thing about this industry is you can earn while you learn. Uh, know enough to make you dangerous. Know enough 
you know, tools, like find out which tool is producing results, right? Which tool is piquing them interest enough to take a little further look and talk to maybe an upline on a three-way call or look at a fuller overview, you know, maybe a five to 10 minute video to get them interested enough to make a, a decision to watch a 30 to 40 minute video. Always blows my mind that people are like, yeah, I want to make a hundred thousand a year, but I'm not sure I want to watch a 45 minute video. Good filtering, by the way, <laughs> probably not your guy. <laughs> Um, so, so, you know, learning, learning, um, and be committed to the process of learning, learning how to invite, learning how to share information, learning which tools to learn or to use, um, learning, um, learning about your compensation plan, learning about your products or your technologies. And, you know, uh, and then third thing is putting that into action. And that's where, of course, your playbook is, is, you know, getting out your list and, and making a list of your network always adding to your network, networking on purpose. I love Eric Worre always says networking on purpose, right? There's people that just go through their, their warm market. When they're done, they're done. Instead of saying, I'm going to commit to a lifelong time of this and learn the profession, be constantly networking on purpose, um, but doing, doing the work. So mindset of that you're going to have a business, learning the skills of the business as you go, right? This is one of those uh, tuition is pretty much free. Sometimes I have people that make $5,000 out of the gate, right? It just depends on your, on your level of um, uh, work ethic, your influence, et cetera. And then doing the mundane, right? I think it was you like seven years ago that taught me that master the mundane, you know. Our uh, friend Jeff Olson with those words, right? <laughs> you do. It's easier not to do, right? So this is um, one thing I love about your High Achievers Playbook is it actually, and by the way, Tim did not ask me to plug this at all, um, but the activities, doing it consistently, over time, consistency compounds for sure. Yeah, I remember when we were working together in a past business and and you talk about like, you know, running out of people to talk to, whenever we would be together, it was impossible for you not to almost always be prospecting, <laughs> whether it was a waitress at a lunch or a someone on a flight or whatever, um, you would engage with everybody. And so when we see how much, money you've made and obviously some of the lifestyle because it's not all about money but the stuff you've been able to do for your family and different things because of that i i i know I mean, it's just so funny is i would be with you and i'd be like oh my gosh she's not going to talk to that person again right <laughs> it was almost to the point of like is there anybody that can get in your way that you don't start to engage with but when you look at the results that you get you can't argue with that and you're always you always had a good bubbly personality took note of like something about them and, and said oh i love your jacket or whatever it was and it somehow led to you talking about you know kind of what you do and and <laughs> i haven't been around anybody that was as good at that as you but i mean you don't have to like you said you don't have to have you go through your warm market so what go out and talk to people Right. Well, my husband is laughing behind me. He's actually in the chair right there chuckling because he, he's the first one to say my wife's never met a stranger. Now, I do want to clarify, though, I do not like walk up and tap people at Target and be like, hey, you're a mom. Have you ever thought about you working from home? You know what I mean? I'm not that guy. So what he's talking about is, you know, people that do come across my life. Right. So we're, you know, we did we did fly first class on Hawaiian Airlines to go to Hawaii to do some training. And it's like you're stuck there for five hours. Well, you get to know the flight attendant. And by the way, I don't I've been on 100 planes since then and probably have talked to three of them about it. I'm kind of a cherry picker, right? I'm if you're if you're looking to build a football team, you don't want a bunch of soccer players, right? So if you're looking for a specific type of person, someone that's actually nice, someone that's um, intelligent, like who do you want to work with? Who's your avatar? If you could create the perfect person, and now I look for it. So if I do have a waitress, a food server, whatever you want to call a PC, I used to be a food server, right? Now I'm thank God nobody thought I was just a food server, right? Because for nine years, I, I served food and I got myself through college. And then it was, you know, what I did in my 20s before I got a quote real job, which I never made money, much as money as I made at a steakhouse. But um, it's like looking for people like you. And when you find it's like, hey, you know, is this your passion? Is this your lifelong career? Do you love being a food server now? Would you, would you ever be open to like looking at something different that might utilize what I see in you? A great personality, intelligence, great service. 
And like last night we went to dinner and a, a gal, uh, Angie, that I've been friends with for 24 years and the waiter comes up to us, food server, I think that's PC now, food server comes up to us, he's like, Angie? She goes, TJ? And I go, Tara, we all used to work at a restaurant together, right? And we're sitting there and he walks away and we're like, and after he's talking, we're like, now he would be good, right? Where the waitress or food server that comes over is like, can I take your order? Okay, be right back. Like, that's not the guy. We're going to talk to that guy. So it's about looking for people who you think that would be a good fit for this. And if obviously, if you're a food server, you're not opposed to walking up to strangers because you do it all day, every day, or a flight attendant where you're doing it. And just looking for people in your everyday life, right? If some mom at my school asks me what I do, I don't sit there and vomit on her. I just say, I have a global wellness business. And, oh, well, what does that mean? And I might just say, hey, you know, um, why are you, why are you asking, you know, are you asking just cause you're curious what I do? Or are you, you, you know, are you looking to start something? And a lot of times they're like, yeah, you know, the kids are getting older and it's about asking questions. I think more than anything is, you know, not, not like putting my, my ideas or my business on anybody, but just being in conversations, looking for that. Oh, you don't like being a food server. You're going to school for nutrition. Well, Hey, guess what? I sell nutrition or, or whatever it is that relates to you is looking for, the opening in normal conversations. And I know he's making it sound much more glamorous than it is. I don't talk to everybody because sometimes I'm like, I would never want that person in my business, right? <laughs> but um, just like, again, networking on purpose, looking, you're like a recruiter. Like I look at it as a recruiter and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm looking for world-class people or people that I see potential in and then just having a normal conversation and asking him. I like to call it the Ford family, asking about their family. Their occupation, do they love it? Are they looking for something different? Their recreation, what do they do? Do they love to travel? That's a good one. I travel all the time. That's another one. Hey, I'm on this trip. Why are you on this trip? This is the fourth free trip I won in two years. What do you do, right? I want to learn. I want to travel for free. And dreams, you know, are you fulfilling your purpose? What is it? And looking for people who are a good fit. Not trying to make everyone a good fit, but looking for the people who already are. Yeah, no, you're you you've been obviously very good at that, and I I don't know how many people you've signed up in those environments where they were strangers, but then they jumped in or became a customer, and you know that's the other great thing about um, some of the products that are out there. And I know you've got a great product with your company. Is not everybody's going to want have your passion to do a business. They may be, uh, you know, they may be very financially set or just don't have the time or want to do even a business like this, but a lot of people can benefit from some of the products that the network marketing industry offers out there. So just talking to people, um, you know, could get you that customer. Maybe you need a handful of customers to qualify for something, or maybe, you, you know, depending on what, what uh, company you're in, there's always customer goals and all these other things that the company lays out for you. So just being open to chat with people, like you said, without vomiting all over them and, and just uh, being gross um, can be very good. Let me ask you this though. Um, limited hours like you do this full time but you sign up someone that maybe is like where you were but they still have less time like when you were doing mortgage before you got into mm -hmm. network marketing you you created the time because i think you saw what you had your hands on and you're like oh my gosh this could be really big but not everybody starts with that and has that vision that you have but they want to do something and they're like maybe they don't like their job but they want to transition out but they have limited hours. Maybe they only have an hour or two a day. What are the things they need to do in limited hours to make sure that they could ratchet up to success? And maybe it's not as fast as you, but it's available. Well, that's a really good question. And I actually do have a training on my free and available for everyone YouTube channel. Um, I teach people how they can do this in seven to eight hours a week. Now, keep in mind, if someone's doing it seven hours a week and someone's doing it 15 hours a week, they're going to grow their team twice as fast. That's math, right? But for the number one thing to do is you have to be inviting. Nothing in network marketing doesn't great. It doesn't matter how how incredibly you could be with a top salesperson at your real estate company twenty years in a row. You could be the number one mortgage guy. You could be the top this person, that person. Nothing. It doesn't matter. Nothing in network marketing starts until you actually start making invitations. So you you got to start inviting. So you can spend an hour a week inviting. If you're a millennial, you might want to use texting, right? If you're my age, maybe Facebook or calling someone. Um, baby boomers still might just drive up to your house, you know, and walk in and be like, hey, I got something for you. Whatever you're comfortable with is just reaching out and saying, hey, just want to let you know, I'm, you know, I started a business. 
I'm looking for two types of people. People who want to be a customer, consumer, whatever, or people who want to start a business. Who do you know who? So number one, inviting. Um, and you can you can do about an hour a week and you could just call people, hey, just started a business. I'm having an official launch as my best friend, my mother, my brother, my sister, my neighbor. Would you just do me a favor and support me and be on a call or in my living room or whatever you decide to Zoom or you know whatever your mode, we do all of them. We do conference calls, we do Zooms, and we also do live presentation. I was just in one last night. However it is that you want to get your information. So that's one thing inviting. Number two is presenting. I'd say, you know, at least a couple hours a week, you should be able to get your information mostly through videos. So maybe a live presentation once, one hour, a couple videos, whatnot. Um, personal development is a must. I would say recommend at least 10 minutes a day. I, I you know, I always like to use this, this, uh, Tim, is that people think they don't have time. Well, first of all, every billionaire, every millionaire, every inventor, every network marketer, um, the ones that made a million dollars a month, we all have the same clock. So you have 24 hours a day times seven days, right? Now let's, it's 168 hours. Now let's say that you work 40 hours a week, right? Very, very good. You work 40, you still have 128. Now you're gonna sleep, right? Eight hours a day, you should. 56 hours, right? Minus 56. Um, let's say you spend 20 minutes a day, three times a day eating. So that's seven hours eating. Maybe you work out five days a week, right? I'm really being generous here. And now, how much family time do you really want? For me personally, a couple hours a day is good, but let's say you really, really love spending family time. Four hours a day is 28 hours. Maybe a couple more hours, say 30 hours. Let's say 35 hours <laughs> of family time. Let's get crazy and say five hours a day. I mean, I don't even think we have enough time after school to bedtime for five hours, but let's just get nuts and say five hours, right? 35, that still leaves 25 hours, right? Maybe you go to church, minus two. 23 hours, you've slept, you've eaten, you've worked a full-time job, you spent five hours a day with your family, you've worked out, you've maybe t you know spent time with your faith. You know what the average American does with these, it's probably backwards, 23 hours, they're watching TV, they're scrolling Facebook, they're doing Candy Crush. So the first thing I did, you know, and I got to $35,000 a month, my 15th month in network marketing, my first thing I did was turn off the TV. You could ask my husband. I literally didn't watch TV for like six years. I had three and four and five years of seasons of The Bachelor and, you know, what's it called? Desperate Housewives, Grey's Anatomy. And when I finally sat down and thought, oh, I probably have a little time to watch TV, I deleted them all because I'm like, I don't care who's screwing who on Wisteria Lane. I don't care who The Bachelor didn't dump at the very last rose ceremony, right? It all of a sudden became clear that my priorities have changed and that useless, mindless entertainment wasn't as fun or rewarding as really helping people. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. So the 23 hours, obviously someone that's full time, you went over, I mean, that was a pretty extensive, that was a lot of sleep. That was a lot of time with family. That was a full time job. And so if you can't find some hours to do this business, then obviously then your success will, will won't be quite as good as others. I mean, obviously people still want to Watch some TV. You could even you could even put in an hour of TV a day there and still well, have yeah. <laughs> fifteen hours left or whatever it is, right? I mean, exactly. Still time there to spend uh, to do that. Um, let me ask you this: belief and attitude. Mm. Those two things are huge in the network marketing profession. You got to have some belief. Obviously, you got to believe in, in what you're doing or the product or what you're representing. Otherwise, it just doesn't work talk about that a little bit and then attitude, you know, when you wake up every day, you know, how important all that is. Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to start with attitude because if you can take away every human right, you know, like I think this was um, Mandela who said this and I'm not going to quote him exactly, but it's some of the gist of like, he was stripped of every single um, right and every single freedom, but you can never take away the right to choose your attitude. You can never steal someone's joy. You could never steal the thoughts in your head. I mean, look at, there was people that came out of the Holocaust that still said, no matter what happened around me, I'm not gonna let it ruin me. I'm not gonna let it destroy me. So whatever happens in your life, in your past, in your present, in your, you know, around your team or your family, you have a hundred percent control of how you react to it. And so I think people who was like, oh, I just, you know, I, I am just miserable because my kids are miserable. Well, that's because you're letting them. Your kids are going to be miserable. First of all, 
It's how you choose to react. And you're reacting that way. It's probably making it more miserable, by the way. Or my boss, or I'm just everyone, victim mentality, right? The first thing you got to do is get control of your attitude and say, I am the captain, right? I, I am. I sent it to a picture of a friend of my um, office yesterday and, and I showed him. I said, that, see that little sticky note on the bottom? It's been there for seven years. It says, I am 100% responsible every day for my attitude, for my business, for my life, for my health. I'm responsible. So the first thing is, Get your attitude in check that nobody, nobody loves you more and nobody's your bigger fan and nobody's going to help you more in your business than you. So your attitude is everything and lots of stuff. People have quit on me. I mean, you've seen me. Um, we've been friends for tw what, 25 years. You've been around my whole journey. You've seen some stuff that I've gone through and have I let it ruin my attitude, right? If I let it break me? No, no, no. no. And, and you've seen some stuff and, um, because I choose to focus on all the great things that have been um, on my journey and all the blessings and all the people and all of the lessons, right? I always say that my attitude is every time something bad happens, whether I cause it or it happens to me like a car wreck or something, why is this happening for me? I'm not a why is this happening to me? I'm not why is this happening for me? So um, that's number one. And number two is um, belief. And I, I like to use this acronym bar, right? Because everyone can remember bar, the bar method, belief, action results. Now, here's the good thing is a lot of times you come into a company and maybe you don't believe about in the industry because you're just brand new. Maybe you don't believe in the company because you don't know enough about it. Maybe you don't believe in the products or services because you haven't used them a long enough time. Customers becoming distributors are better because they have belief. You know, if, if you used a service and saved a ton of money or you used a product and has results, your beliefs can be higher. But you can start with action. You can just start taking action, right? Take action, take action, take action. You know, do the things that the people who are having success are doing and you're going to get results. And every time you get a result, whether it's a paycheck or a testimony or a satisfied customer, it's going to feed your belief. And it's a circle. The more belief you have, the more action you'll take, the more results you'll get. And it's a circle that goes round and round and round and round. But you can start it with action. And over time, your belief is, you know, going to skyrocket because you're going to see. So I always say, like, get a customer in. If they're not ready, let them be a customer. Let them experience your products. And when they have a life changing result, that's your best funnel. So, you know, a lot of people want to go after the, the, the network marketers, the sharks. No, I'll take a thousand customers and get, uh, you know, 10, you know, 10 out of probably 15 of them to believe in the product. And then I'll talk to them about in those you know, let's say 90 out of 100 people, maybe maybe 20 of them are entrepreneurs, then I'll have the conversation with them. But belief, action, results, belief, action, results, to the degree which you believe, you'll take action. And then you take action, you're going to get results, right? Because even a blind squirrel will find a nut once in a while. So, <laughs> and belief is... Um, Tapping on the shoulder at that lady in Target, right? right. <laughs> even though you don't do that, if you tapped on enough shoulders, someone would say, okay, fine, what is it you have? <laughs> right. Exactly. And also, um, start, you have a different posture when you believe, right? When you first get into network marketing, you might buy my first. I was hit away from it for years. I was like, I'm a network marketer. Now I'm like, I'm a network marketer. I love it. It's, I've never seen so many lives change. I've never seen so much prosperity. I've never seen so many average people have extraordinary results, right? I'm proud of being a network marketer now, but I, I wasn't you know, a while I had to, to believe I had to build my belief in the industry. And the, the biggest one, I think that we talk about, so the industry, your products or services, um, your company, um, the, the biggest one and the hardest one is belief in yourself. And, um, I believe that everyone's extraordinary. I think we all just have a different starting line, but that we can all be at the finish line at the same time that, you know, just depending on things you do, books you read. So, you know, this, I'm an avid, avid, avid personal development. I'll like every single day. It's part of my habit. I like, I can't get enough. Like I have stacks of books that are waiting for me to read. And I'm, I'm annoyed that I can't read them fast enough and I can't do audible books. And everyone's like, Oh, do audible. I can't, I just don't learn. Um, I, I'm like ADD. I'm like, why is that squirrel climbing the tree? Wait, what did they just say? Like, I literally have ADD. So rewind. Have, rewind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, what I'm are actually, you reading right now, Tara? <laughs> what am I reading? Actually, I'm reading a health book right now um, just because I'm in the health and wellness. So I'm always looking. Um, but the actually, I'm in two books. See, I have ADD. One of is a health book. It's regardless. It's it's called The Medical Medium. Another one is High Achievers Playbook by Brendan Burchard. Um, B-U-R-C-H-A-R-D. You can actually find his um, Facebook page. 
It is um, Brandon Burchard, Live Love Matter. That's his motto. And if you go to his Facebook page and hit sign up, he will actually give you a book. It's like a $26 book for free. I think it's $7 shipping and handling. I recommend that to everyone, not just high achiever. High achieving and um, family relationships, health is a, is a mindset. It's an extraordinary book. And I'm about halfway through that. And I'm going to his live event in May. That's how much I love him. So, Wow. That's a good good plug for Brandon. Maybe I need to interview him on this uh, on this as well yeah, since like, you're plugging like, him. He's Oprah big. Like he's like he's like Tony Robbins big. He's not as big as Tony Robbins. He's like the uh, like top hundred most followed people in the world. He, he works with Pred. Like, you could try. You could try. He is <laughs> when I what meet him you? in May. You can go to that in Santa Clara. So when you meet him in May, maybe you can come by and be like, "Hi, I'm Tim Lunsford from that have heard me High Achievers Playbook." Can I get five minutes of your time? <laughs> yeah. Who knows, right? Oh man. So. I, I heard through the grapevine that you're going to be on the panel um, for the women's uh, event that Eric and Marina Ware put on every year coming up soon. You're going to be doing something with the social media uh, stuff. Talk about that. Like what your give give the the viewers of this something that you might be training or talking about or something some advice you'd give when it comes to social media, and then mention kind of what you're doing with that on that panel. Yeah, well, I just got invited like three or four days ago. So I, I, I'm assuming it's just general will be asked questions. I don't know if we'll get the questions ahead of time. I literally was just invited. But um, I have been able to really um, use social media. My baby is Facebook. I love Facebook. On my, on my normal profile, not a business page, I have, um, I think, 4,800 friends or 5,000 friends. Hey, Reginald. And then I have, oh, I just passed over 20,000 followers. And so I actually like my profile. You know, Tim, it's just been an authentic journey over the last, you know, since I got on Facebook in 2008 of just sharing, being who I am, sharing stories. Um, you know, I'm very passionate about health and wellness. It's all I've ever done. You know that you tried to get me off of that for a while. And what I tell you, oh, no, I'm not passionate, right? Remember that? But they, um, um, and so sharing information about health and wellness, educating people as well as inspiring people, sharing my failures, sharing my successes. And it's just been a, a, a place where I kind of do attraction marketing. I don't, I don't use like tactics where I go and private message people and be like, Hey, are you open? I literally do enough to that, get them to say, Hey, what is it you do? And because I don't want to like, I don't want to force myself on someone and be like, Oh, well, maybe I should. Maybe you should talk to her. This is a successful person. I want someone to say, wow, I've been watching you. I know who you are. I know what you stand for. You are you look like a successful person. Tell me more. And I want to partner with you. And I've, I've sponsored, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds off of Facebook. And people that now are become really good friends of mine that I would have never known if it wasn't for social media. So it can be a valuable tool if you do it right. There's a right way and a wrong way. I do also have um, videos on that in my YouTube channel. And again, I don't, it's very generic training so i don't pitch my business or my company ever and uh, i do have some do's and don'ts on my youtube which is um youtube.com forward slash create wealth with tara or you can go just search tara wilson that's cool so you're going to be sharing on the panel um what let me ask you this uh when it comes to the social media do you do anything besides facebook and are you you know obviously instagram and snapchat and some of these other ones are, are kind of heating up um do any have you dove into that at all or just limited limited i think i have a few thousand followers i have like five thousand followers on twitter but my my facebook i think my amazing husband who's like or there you can't see him um go take a shower by the way um uh, we have a lunch date in 20 minutes um <laughs> real normal life uh believe it or not we work from home both of us and like the first time we've had lunch in like four months together so i'm very excited about that um uh, I all of my Facebook posts automatically have them automatically go to my Twitter. I'm still trying to figure out how to get my Instagram to my Facebook because I would do that more. But I, for some reason, my accounts they aren't mashing, and I, I have to dive into that. Instagram, I, I've got a little bit. I, I just it's so much that I've mastered Facebook, and I really like Facebook because. It's, it's easy to me. I can see people's pages. I can go. We can do video. We can do that. I can share stories that are long with, you know, I just, I just like the format better and then messenger. Whereas Instagram, I'm like, Oh gosh, I had a message from 16 months ago. I didn't even know it was there. You know what I mean? Where right. Facebook messenger, I get that notification. Um, I just don't get that on my, um, on my, uh, my Instagram, but I think they're great. I think you got to master one. I'm, 
and I, I love this, uh, you know, Facebook. Let me ask you this, as far as the industry, um, network marketing, obviously the stigma of network marketing pyramid scheme or, or some of the other things that we've had to go through or some of the different uh, companies that have had legal issues or whatever. Um, where, where, where's your thoughts on where the industry is right now and what the potential is for um, individuals to have success in network marketing going forward? I mean, you, you still feel it's a growing thing. Do you think it's um, getting bigger than ever or what, what's your thoughts on it? I think it's better than ever. Number one is we have come to a climate where uh, people are spending an unbelievable amount of time in front of this more and more and more. And I mean, I, I don't even want to know what like my children's generation are going to look like, you know what I mean? So getting eyes, people are looking to the internet to buy everything from my, my husband's in the dollar shave club, which we love, love by the way, who would have thought we had ever been on, on auto ship subscription for razors, but we love it. Like, right. It's less expensive. They're phenomenal. They come without having to never ever don't have razors. Um, coffee, he gets coffee on subscription. You know, I get all of my supplements, all my weight loss, all my energy drinks, like everything we are, we have on so many subscriptions and people, this is something like Amazon. If Amazon's not here every day, I'm pretty sure the guy's like, is everything okay in the Wilson house? I mean, we literally get a thousand packages a year. I'm not even exaggerating. That's probably low. So I think people are, are like the, the buying um, behaviors are shifting to online. So, you know, having, you know, when you sign up, for example, with my company, you, you know, you can sign up for as little as $50. You get a website with a shopping portal with amazing information and no maintenance fees. We could even put products in a shopping cart, send it. The person could be checked out in 30 seconds. Like the ease of transaction, right? Why not get your wellness products, your makeup products, your beauty products from someone you know? And so it's just kind of the, the buying behavior already shifted. So this is like kind of a laptop lifestyle and obviously no inventory, no assets. I, I um, heard the other day, I think it was Eric Warren, they said the average business costs $65,000 to start a brick and mortar business. Oh, you know how long it takes to get like even on that? Year, three to five years where in network marketing, you can put up a website, start contacting people, give them the feature benefits to your product and start making money like literally within a minute of, of starting your business. Right. And the whole thing like Uber, you know, I always tell people, they were never taxi drivers, but why are they driving cars? Because Uber was an app. So, I mean, this, this is the first generation in human history that can build a business from a device that fits in their pocket. I'm going to capitalize on that. <laughs> the other thing I'm seeing, and I don't know if you are too, is you're almost before, you know, our parents and even us early on, it was, okay, I work a job. I have no bandwidth for doing anything else. And these days, I'm seeing um, like if you're not doing a part time thing or if you don't have a secondary or a third or fourth uh, income stream, it's like you're 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 just not not doing things the right way. Um, I'm, I'm seeing that it's like you have to have something. So if you're a corporate America, you don't know when that layoff's coming or when your boss ends up being a jerk and you like you don't like that job. And then you got to go find another job. So I see tons of people and it's not always network marketing but they're doing two and three and four different businesses to make yeah. money. And I think network marketing can be one of those for almost any household at this point. Right. And um, I think this is like the era of the side hustle. And and you're like, like, I think, um, I, I think I heard somewhere recently, it was like 58% of Americans have a side hustle, whether it's consulting, affiliate marketing, network marketing, moonlighting part-time, like 58% of the people, are working more than one job. Um, Uber, I mean, think of college students, retirees, dads, moms, college students are driving Uber to make extra money. And the great thing about it is flexible. Well, our goal is to be more like as a company with using technology is to be easier than Uber to own a global wellness business. Because in Uber, you're still limited geographically. You can only drive within a few hour radius, right? So you're controlled by how many Uber drivers. Whereas uh, in network marketing, you have access to multiple countries, you know, technically billions of people sometimes, and you can use technology to reach those. It's, it's extraordinary. Well, and if you're going to drive for Uber, you're going to spend five to 12 hours a day behind the wheel driving. Um, there is some advantages to that. I guess in between rides, you could listen to personal development and get a little bit better at yourself. But yeah. if, you spend, 
those same hours doing a network marketing business. Um, and then, you know, cause you don't get, I mean, you can get some referrals. Like if I refer you to drive for Uber, I might get like 10 bucks, but yeah. in this business, when you refer somebody, they become a customer or a rep, you know, you can multiply your business from your home. You're not going to do that being an Uber driver unless you start your own Uber yeah. and then you have, but you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to get whatever per hour where this is, you go do the work and, and that person, goes out and gets a hundred customers that, you know, stay on for the rest of their life. That's, that's residual income. And that's a beautiful word, right? Plus you can leverage people. You're only one driver. You can only drive so many hours while I can teach a thousand people, 10,000 people to do what I do and then make a percentage of it for the rest of my life. That is something when I understood that I was like, why doesn't everybody want to do this? Like, <laughs> I know. And I think the stigma of network marketing, is is going a, a little bit going away. I mean, obviously there's some companies that make a, a bad name for the profession or different news things will come out and someone will screw this up for a lot of people. But for the most part, the network marketing arena is getting more and more accepted. Obviously women are loving it. As you know, the industry is 70 to 80% women and, and almost a lot of the women you know and a lot of the women you work with, I mean, they they are already buying these products. And so, I mean, like you, I know you support a lot of other network marketing women with buying their products because they're your friends. You love their products too. You just happen to work the one you work. But I mean, it's it's not uncommon to buy two or three different products from different network marketing companies. No, I agree. I mean, if I'm gonna buy makeup, why wouldn't I buy it from my friend who sold makeup, right? Um, I have uh, friends that are in the jewelry business, so I'm not gonna name names, but when I'm in search of jewelry, I'll go to the website and then I'll message her and be like, hey, how quickly can you have this on your door? And she puts it on her door. I either PayPal or leave her a check and I go pick up my jewelry, right? I'm gonna shop from my friend's stores because if everyone did that, imagine if everyone did that, Tim, and everyone just, you know, every network marketer, there's millions of us, 19 million in the United States, dumped $100 more into the industry above and beyond what they're doing. It would be a $400 billion industry just in the US. Yeah. Why are we going to like Amazon? Why are we going to Walmart? Why are we going to Estee Lauder and Macy's when there are equally or better products in the industry? And I think now because of the cost of doing business, manufacturing has gone down. Um, they're doing you know more things quicker. You've got the speed of technology, not having to <laughs> deliver pallets like in the old Amway days. And uh, credit card processing, it's less expensive to get involved in a network marketing company now. The products are coming down. Like if I look at some of the stuff in my in my personal um, uh, store, for example, my, some of my wellness products are far less expensive than crappier, unhealthier versions on the market. So yeah. I think that nowadays, I think a, a, an old stigma was that products were more expensive. Well, not so much. I have a friend that you know sells a bunch of products, and their chapstick is two dollars and thirty cents or something. Well, I pay three dollars all day long at Target for you know right. kind that's. I don't think it's as good. So um, I definitely support my friends, you know, if, if I don't have it in my store, of course I would buy it from someone else for sure. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So I think the industry is obviously in, in good hands. I think um, with technology, like you said, everyone's got it on their phone. If they want uh, your product, if they've met you before and they hear about your product, they can go on their phone and either message you and say, get it for me or, you know, get become a customer and then just jump on. And when they need more, they just grab it. And it's uh so as much as you get Amazon there, um, the network marketing companies are shipping thousands and thousands of packages a day, obviously. Um, and so it's working out really well. Let me, uh, let me just ask you one last question. You've been nice enough to come on here. We don't really get too crazy with promoting other people's businesses because we want people to, to obviously log on, have some fun and not feel like they're going to get pitched on anything. But I did want you to be able to say what company you're working with and, and why you like it, but don't be too gross. <laughs> Am I ever? No, I, uh, well, it's, I think more importantly, why I, I, after 11 years in the industry, well, nine years, two years ago, I, I searched the industry. We, me and my teams have built teams of over 300,000 people in 12 countries. So needless to say, I know how to build a network. And my number one thing is I want products that were so good that people were staying on them. And our flagship product, it was a retail company for six years. It's a $40 medical breakthrough. It's herbal supplement with 23 studies. And that's why I'm here. We, of course, we have amazing skincare. We've got energy drinks. We've got 
um, great probiotics, omegas, other supportive health stuff, but I'm here because of a $40 medical breakthrough that has 12 international patents and 23 studies that I have seen literally change people's lives. And so we call it the little yellow pill. And, um, you know, if you or anybody know that doesn't have good sleep, good energy, aches and pains, inflammation, we all know what's related to inflammation. I would love to get some information because I, and, and, and I'm always willing to do trades. I'm absolutely willing to do trades. If you have something I don't, like I know, I, I'm not going to name her name and call her up. There's a, a number one earner in another company. She sells makeup. We trade, right? We just trade. Um, and that's always fun too. So um, I love, I love all of our products, but I'm here because of a medical breakthrough that everyone can afford. And that anyway. company is Life Vantage. Company's Life Vantage, exactly. Awesome. Life, all right. Well, heart. Heart. I know, <laughs> team heart. That's right. I know that Chris has probably bathed or showered like you ordered him to do. Maybe he hasn't. No, he hasn't. Well, he extended the reservation till twelve fifteen. <laughs> okay, so he he knows that we could ramble on here. So he's probably like, okay, I'll get ready when she's done. <laughs> she's already showered. I'm like, oh, I slept through that. <laughs> well, thanks for having me, Tim. And Tim, by the way, lives like ten miles from me. So next time, Tim, just come on over. <laughs> we don't have to worry about this technical difficulty. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, Tara. I, I hope the high achievers uh, got something out of it. And I know they will. And uh, we'll talk soon. Have a good lunch. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.